Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make multi-panel plots in Qt Grace. So if you haven't done so already, pull up Qt Grace and this is the steps you follow. The first thing that is convenient to do is to import your data. You don't have to do it first, but that's what we're going to do right now. So to import our data, I'm going to go to data, import, and you can bring in lots of different file formats. I'm just going to do ASCII because that's how I've already got my data prepared. So you have to tell it where your data is stored. Mine is in my downloads folder. And I've got this data set one and data set two. Now when you click open, all that does is open the folder where the data is located. That doesn't actually import it yet. To import it, you're going to uh, actually, you can double click on this or hit OK. But first make sure that it's in the right format. Now I have just XY data, so I don't need to do like XY DX, which would you know, be XY but with error bars in the X, or any other different types. So we can just do XY. And I only have one single set of data and it's going to ask me what graph do you want to import it to. Right now by default is there's only one graph window available when I open up my Qt Grace and it's called graph zero. So that's fine. I can go ahead and hit OK on that one and you see as soon as I do it I import data here. Let's do data set two and import that as well. Okay and it's this red line here at the bottom. So now we have both uh, we have both of our data sets so we're going to close this and now what we want to do is make a multi-panel plot because when you look at this data even though these two uh, sets of data might be related to one another they're very different in terms of like their their y value for example one might be like thermal conductivity and this one could be heat capacity the values for heat capacity are going to be low and they have different units than thermal conductivity which are going to be higher in different units so it doesn't make sense for them to be plotted on the same plot so one nice option is to create a multi-panel plot so how do you go about doing that to do that you come here to plot we're going to go to graph appearance Graph appearance, uh, when you pull this up, what it's going to allow us to do is first off define graphs. We can make multiple graphs and then we can say exactly where we want them to exist on this plane of white space, right? So for example, right now, I'm going to close this for a second. In this plane of white space, it goes in the x direction from 0 to 1 and from the y direction, it goes from 0 to 1. And our graph is occupying from point 0.2 to point 0.8 and from point 0.2 to point 0.8 in the x and y directions. So we can do the same, we can make another graph and have it go over a different range. So let's go to plot, uh, plot graph windows. First thing we're going to do is create a new graph. I'm just going to duplicate this, right? Now we have two graphs and they're both on the exact same spot. So graph 0 and graph 1, they both go from x equals point 0.2 to point 0.8. So 20% of the way on the x to 80% and 20% on the y to 80%. So let's change that. Let's make this a vertical multi-panel plot, right? So now on our y, we don't want it to start at point 2. Let's say we want it to start at point 0.52, right? Now it's going to start right there. That's not exactly what we want because now it's overlapping on the other one. It's not ideal. But we're going to go to this one. Instead of going from point 0.2 all the way up to point 0.8, let's have it go up to say point 0.48. That's going to leave a gap between the two, right? Now if these things have the exact same x-axis, say temperature, for example, then you probably don't need the labels here for this. And instead, you can make this gap a little bit smaller. You could say make it go to 0 0.49, make it a little smaller. And this one, instead of starting at 0.52, have it start at 0 0.51, right? And then you can go and accept it. Now that you're at this point, it still doesn't look quite right. There's some things we want to change. So on this one, you can either come up here to plot and you can select axis properties, or you know if you just click on these axes, it'll also pull it up. So on, we're going to now be editing the axes on this upper plot. We know that because it has these little black squares around it, right, on the corners. So on the x-axis, let's say we want to get rid of these labels. So we'll just come over here to the tick labels, and one way to do it would just be to bring it all the way down to zero, right, and hit apply. And now you notice when we do that, we've gotten rid of them over there. If we want to add y labels for this, um, it's easy to do over here to the main you could give it a label right this is thermal conductivity right in watts uh, per meter kelvin now uh, the new grace actually supports uh, if I let's hit like apply here right the new grace actually supports latex commands so we could actually give this like a Greek letter if you wanted to let's try it I think you could do money and then money sign again and then you write the Greek letter right kappa I think this will work uh, let's try that maybe no. Um, let's try this. Okay. So it didn't know the, the capitalized kappa for uppercase kappa, but it knew the lower, right? So you could write that and you can do Greek letters. Um, 
you know, whatever, right? And now you can do the same thing for this other graph. So we hit apply, you hit accept. We could change the spacings, right? That's all, you know, for another video, I guess. But you can do the same thing down here, right? Double click this thing. Now we do want an x-axis label, but we also want a y-axis label. So for this one, let's have it be, say, heat capacity. Well, let's just do CP. So again, we're going to do, and the units might be um, joules uh, per gram Kelvin. Right? Okay, so there we've got that label in place. Let's do the X label and say, I don't know, maybe it's temperature. Temperature, maybe in Kelvin or Celsius more likely since it's going down to zero. Right? Okay, so we are now able to make these multi-panel plots. They look okay, but we've still got data on both of them, so that's easy to change. We just are going to select this, and we need to hide one of our data sets. So that's the wrong one. I hid the thermal conductivity data, um, so I'm going to show it again, and we're going to hide this one. The, oops, sorry. When you do this, you have to select it like that, and then show hide. Uh, excuse me, hide. Right, so that makes that go away. And then on this one, we want to, now by switching, you see that these little uh, black markers change around the corners. That's how we can tell which one we're working on. This one, we, wanna, we want to hide the first data set. There you go. Now we just need to get the right scale bars for our y-axis. So on this one, the, the scale should be very different than the other one. Instead of going from zero to 30, let's have it go from zero to maybe 0.4. Since this is heat capacity that we're talking about, it's going to be a lower value there. And there you go. We're obviously going to need to change our tick marks from a major spacing of five. Let's have it go from 0.1 maybe. So now you've got tick marks. And if they don't overlap nicely, then you can always change that, right? If, let's say you did want a little bit of a gap there. That's no problem. You're just going to go back to plot, graph appearance, and maybe make this one end a little bit lower. Maybe do have it only go to 0.48. And that's no problem, right? So that is how you prepare multi-panel plots. If you wanted to say make a third plot, right? Or if you wanted to split this into quarters, you could easily do that. You would just come up here to plot, you go to graph appearance. Let's split it into quarters, for example, right? So we're gonna duplicate one of these data sets, right? Now this one, um, it's talking about this one on the bottom. It's flashing red to show us that. Let's have this one be the bottom right quarter. So this one, we want the x-axis to be the same, but now we want the y, or sorry, the y is gonna be the same, but we want the x to, instead of starting at 0.2, let's have it start at 0.52, right? So it's gonna be over there. This one, we want it to end now at 0.48, maybe, right? And if you need more space, you can create more space. Um, I'll show you actually another trick we can do in just a moment. Um, in fact, let's do that right here. Let's say that you want to keep a different label for some reason on this data set over here on the y-axis. Something you can do is you can make the label appear on the opposite side, right? So under here on the y-axis of this data set down here, this, this graph, you can select for the label to appear on the opposite side, right? So you hit apply, and sure enough, this is now out over here on this side. So if that's a convenient way to show that, that's something you can do. And you can really make this as complex as you want. It's helpful just to think that this entire window goes from zero to one and from zero to one. Now note that, by the way, if you do shrink that, we need to change this because these are now crowded. That's easy to do. Go to your x-axis. And instead of every 100 degrees, maybe make it every 200 degrees. Right? You'll have to do that on both of these. No problem. Right? There's lots of flexibility here in QT Grace, and that's really one of the greatest reasons to use this software. Okay, that's it for today.